Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. Hi, I'm Jessica Faust. Uh, we are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing, but today we're discussing our recent reads. <laughs> I love this one. Yes, we do this video, oh, almost dropped it. We do this video quarterly now, it seems, where we talk about a few of our favorite reads from the previous quarter. Um, so Jessica, do you want to go first, dive in? I do. Um, I'm just gonna go top to bottom, so size yep. order. Yep. I read, <laughs> <laughs> I read Set Boundaries, Find Peace. Set Boundaries, I think I said Boundaries. Set Boundaries, Find Peace. Um, by Nedra Glover Tawab. And I have to tell you, if you don't follow Nedra on Instagram, you have to. She's amazing on Instagram. I'll actually sometimes just go and scroll through all of her stuff. Yeah, but, her newsletter um, too is great. Yep, I have the, I, somehow I get her newsletter to two different email addresses. <laughs> Over so I might be a little <laughs> too all in. But um, this is a fantastic book. Um, and even I think if you think you have good boundaries or are pretty good about your boundaries, um, I find that, and, and I think, thought I was, let's say, um, but I find this book to be really um, empowering. Um, and she is so empowering on her, on everything she does. Um, but she talks through different types of boundaries. She actually, I actually have the workbook too. She has a workbook oh. as well, a companion workbook, which is great. Um, especially those who really struggle with boundaries, personal or professionally. I think what I've seen is that some people might be really strong in one, but struggle in another. Um, and you read this too, right? Yeah, that was a whole bookends book club book. <laughs> yeah, it was. I think, uh, like you said, I think everything in that book is, uh, even if you do know it, it's very reaffirming. And it's like, okay, but you can do it. You can take it that one extra step and you can even strengthen your boundaries somehow, which I think was really great about it. Because there are things in there we should first acknowledge that I'm not good with this. Um, so for me, it was all very revelatory. <laughs> You're getting better. I am getting better. Um, but for me, it was all very revelatory. But then there are things that you know that sometimes you just need to hear somebody say to you. And I think that's what she does so well. Like all of it is, most of it's basic, right? It uh, is. It but is. it's for saying it to you in a very non-judgmental, empowering way that just makes it sink in. in a different. Which is kind of how we both feel about Atomic Habits too, right? Like it's yeah. all there. Like it's all stuff that we know sort of innately, but... <laughs> It told to you in that way where you're just like, well, duh. Well, sometimes you need to see yourself too. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's even if I know what I struggle with, I need somebody to point it out. I need to see myself. And um, I tend to be the boundary police here at Bookends a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially if I see people unintentionally sort of asking others to do things that I don't think they should be doing i will be the first one to zap in there and say not your job <laughs> work-life boundaries you're good with work-life boundaries so um so yeah i think it's a great book i think it's a great book for anybody and i think at the very least hop on her instagram because it's great yeah for everything's sure great everything's great everything's great <laughs> everything's going well um, all right so i will also go top to bottom i read well i almost just threw that i read sea of tranquility by emily st john mandel who you I, are a huge fan of. A huge fan of Emily St. John Mandel. Um, if you've not read her work, Station Eleven, The Glass Hotel. This, I had the feeling of like reading a new favorite book while reading mm. it. It was so good. I saw a lot of people compare it to Cloud Atlas, um, which was interesting. I, I could see it. But it was a time travel novel that is sort of meta and also like taking characters from her previous books. But it was done in a way where... You don't feel like you're reading hard sci-fi. You don't feel like you're reading historical. Like, it's just so well done. And when you get to, like, the last 40 pages and everything starts to, like, slowly click for you, it makes the whole book just, like, like, your your perception of the whole book changes. Well, that's, it's so good. That's what she did with Station Eleven, I felt like. Yeah. You're reading this story, and then at the end, it all starts to come together in this, like, holy crap. Yeah, I was talking to somebody else who just read The Glass Hotel, 
And I said, what I love about the way she writes is everything is huge, right? Like these big grand stakes, this huge mm -hmm. setting, like everything is all over the place, but it never feels that way. It feels very intimate, very small. Yeah. You are in with each character. And I think that's how she's able to like get people on board with these yeah. crazy ideas. I mean, this is 1912, 1918, 2020, and like 2300. And it's just like, how is that going to work? But it does. It was so worth it. I do recommend reading Station Eleven and the Glass Hotel. I think you don't have to, but I think if you do, I think you'll enjoy this even more. Really? Is there some connections? Um, so there is a character who is in the Glass Hotel, and there is a character who's basically modeled off of her. There's an author on the last book tour on Earth mm. before a pandemic who wrote a pandemic novel. And you can tell there's a lot of uh, of her own experiences as a, an author on book tour in that character. Yeah, it was really good. I loved it. I have to say kudos to those designers, that cover. Ooh, it's I so can't good. Stop, as you hold it up, I can't stop staring at it. It's so... Great lovely. edges for the Barnes & Noble edition, which is nice. my favorite book design thing ever. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. it's And it like... I don't know. It just feels like a book that you want to hold and read, which not every book does. So, well, I am not as big of a fan as you are, of course, yeah. but now I do want to read that. So I might. I think I think you might like this one okay. better than I, didn't, I like Station Eleven, Glass Hotel. I didn't finish. Yeah, I think you would like this better than the Glass Hotel. Okay, and it's shorter too. It's only like like two hundred and fifty ish pages. So I could use some short books. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So nice. Uh, Okay, I read Yinka, Where Is Your Husband? A um, couple of things about this book. Um, there's a lot of talk in publishing these days about rom-coms. Um, rom-coms have really, I guess, as of, I guess it's probably been five years, really just um, yeah. hit big and have done super well but what's been most interesting to me as a professional about the rom-com successes is that the publishers looking for them are not just romance publishers so rom-coms stand for romantic comedy and they tend to fall into the romance genre um, they um, tend to be published in trade paperback and have sort of this illustrated cover in a similar manner to this. Um, Helen Wong, Jasmine Gilroy, um, who else am I missing? There's a lot, but a those, ton, but some examples of what is seen as rom-com. Well, this, I'm, I'm not a huge rom-com reader, personally. I, there are others who read a lot of it here that I just don't. But this, to me, is an example of a rom-com that is being published by a publisher that's not normally a romance publisher. So it's a little bit more upmarket than I think a typical rom-com. It expands, I think, in a bigger way beyond the romance. And this is the kind of rom-com I really like to read. So um, Yinka is um, a Nigerian woman in her 30s, and I'm trying to read, I'm trying to remember where she lives. I think it's set in London, if I remember correctly. And um, she is not married. And her mother is, uh, and her aunties are obsessed with the fact that Yinka needs to be married. And um, in a sort of Bridget Jones-ish way, but I don't want you to think this is another Bridget Jones, but in sort of that style, um, Yinka hits a number of roadblocks along the way, some of them self-created. In fact, it is a little Bridget Jones, it's now that I say that, but um, hits a number of roadblocks, some of them self-created and is on this journey of self-discovery. Um, and I don't wanna give too much away, but it's really fun. I love Yinka, I love all the characters in this book. Um, her friends, her aunties, her cousins, um, the dates she goes on. I really like this, and I liked that it had sort of a wider, um, it wasn't just about Yinka falling in love and a happily ever after. I'm curious um, who published it. Uh, this was um, Pamela Dorman, Viking. Oh, oh, I love Pamela Dorman books. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I do too. I do too. So, um, 
So it was great, you know, for me, it was to see what these other publishers are saying when they're looking for rom-com, but it was also a great read. I liked it. Oh, good. Okay, I read The Maid by Nita Prose, which I'm sure- I'm less, I'm less. Yeah, unless you live under a rock, you have probably seen or heard of by now, because this book has been huge, uh, New York Times bestseller by now. Um, I loved it. It, I think it's it's funny, because we had this conversation at Bookends recently, where we talked about how cozy mysteries in that mass market format sort of seem to not be doing as well as this kind of cozy mystery, right? Where it's not quite, um, hook driven right and it's a bit more hardcover um bigger story sort of like you're talking about rom-coms right yeah like i was gonna say market. it's showing a real shift in the market of yeah. the commercial genre fiction market in both of these examples right they're sort of bleeding into one another which happens here like this is being marketed i'm fairly certain as a cozy um so this takes place in a hotel with a maid who um walks in on a murder and there's a giant spider on my ceiling Oh, that's nice. It's eating the mosquitoes. Yeah, well, I'm not as much of a fan of spiders as you are, so we're going to have to get that when the video pauses. <laughs> and keep an eye on That is enormous. It's like they're not meant to be that big. They are. Anyway, I'm sorry, Madison. Please cut all of that. <laughs> Do not ever. Um, and you know, I'm going to paranoidly watch that. So, you know, um, this is why it has to stay in. No, she wa she witnesses a murder in a hotel room and she sort of gets implicated. So really the same setup as, you know, a cozy mystery, right? Amateur right. sleuth and their life gets implicated in a crime. And um, it's just really funny and witty. The character seems to be neurodiverse, um, though it's never explicitly stated. Mm -hmm. Um but just sort of the the social perceptions are um are, are different than how you know they're intended sometimes and i think it makes for a really fun mystery that yeah. you can't help but like try and guess by the end of it um so yeah i definitely recommend this one i'm curious to see if more books sort of come out in this vein in the vein of the thursday murder club yeah uh, which i know i talked about out on this channel before but i'm really curious to see if um if more of these books start hitting the market, because I like them. I, they're part of my MSW well now, because I like those lighter, fair, easy reading mysteries. Yeah, I would say if I'm going to do a rom-com or a mystery, these last two books are a very good description of what I would want. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you want to take a break and get your friend? Um, you know, he's just, he's just chilling. Okay. I, I'm, I'm not going to jump up and hit it. I'm going to get the vacuum. So <laughs> in the video pause. <laughs> okay. okay, then. Well, then I'll go next. Yeah. Um, I read uh, The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekanon, I believe is the pronunciation. Um, I read their first book, which was The Wife Between Us. I looked it up. Yeah, I remember um, the life between us. I whenever I think of that book, I remember it sitting on your desk for just the longest time. <laughs> well, I did it. Yeah, it was in your TBR pile. You used to keep your TBR pile on your old desk on the back behind your computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, now it's smaller. My desk <laughs> and my TBR pile. Yeah. Um I they the wife between us was one of I think the first in the domestic suspense sort of run you know it was soon after Gillian Flynn it was all of those kinds of books and I liked that I like this better yeah it, you, it's on my to-do list you have not my to-do list my to read list you've been I'll talking about it, this one for a while I'll send it to you if you don't have it I'll send it to you um so this is a couple that um they're struggling and they go to therapy and it's a situation where you're not really sure what happens but the person that seems to be the most unreliable is the therapist ah and is the, therapist the pov character yes oh, okay and so it's not just i'm tired of sort of the marriage domestic suspense stories i feel like i see them a lot in my inbox and certainly there are a ton of them published and I'm not so sure there's an original way to do this, but this did it because I don't really think it's so much about the marriage as it is about the therapist. And what you can't quite figure out is what's the therapist's story? What 
is the skin that she has in the game of this couple. And it feels like she's manipulating them the whole time. Oh, that's and cool. Yeah, it's really cool. That's exactly it. It's really cool. And this is what I'm missing in my inbox about domestic suspense. For the record, it's cool in fiction. It's so yeah. <laughs> Dear therapist, not cool in real life. Right, right. <laughs> But yeah, I was riveted by this. I really loved the read. Um, and I did love that they, this is exactly what it means when people in publishing say they want a fresh take on an old story. This is exactly that. That's cool. So I thought it was great. Yeah, it sounds really good. Okay, my last one. It's a brick of a book. Ooh. Took me forever, but it was so worth it. I finally read Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This was, okay, so I bought this from Book of the Month when I was trying to pause my Book of the Month. You know how you can't pause without all of the, using all those credits? So I picked it up finally, and it sat on my shelf forever, and then the Apple TV show was coming up. So I was like, let me finally read it before Apple TV show drops. It was so worth it. Um, it was, the first couple of chapters took me a little bit of, like, grounding who the characters were, but when I finally did it, Honestly, it was like a sprawling epic about a family who, um, a Korean family who ends up in Japan during the height of, you know, the World War and the Japanese, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out here. The Japanese, okay, I feel dumb. Anyway, I can't remember the word, but. What's <laughs> happened? Yes, it was so worth it. It started out with, um, with a girl whose parents owned a hostel in Korea and they um and her she ends up having a baby and moving to Japan and just sort of her life and all of the generations that follow her and it all ties back to a pachinko par parlor in Japan it was so well done it was a book that I actually didn't want to leave when I was done like you just kind of ah. see where it goes from there like where the next generation go it starts in the early 1900s and I believe ends in 1990 or 1989 okay so so it's it's the whole decade I mean the whole century um it I really just flubbed that pitch but it was really <laughs> worth it You're I loved excited. it I have not been reading much literary fiction, but that one yeah. didn't feel like literary fiction at all. It felt very, um, very accessible and, you know, like all the characters felt real and fleshed out. Like you just wanted to root for them. Uh, so definitely worth it. Oh, nice. Good to know. Yeah. So that was it for us. These were my three books for the first, for the beginning of the year. There were others, but these are my three favorite. Yeah, we're just, yes, we are reading more than this sometimes Don't but we're picking three so yeah these are mine yeah so we hope you enjoyed this video let us know if there's something that we should read for the next quarter we always like a good book recommendation yeah. um don't forget to like and subscribe and we hope to see you back here next time bye